Welcome to my switching routing and wireless essentials course. This should be the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is the second of three courses. Module 13, wireless LAN configuration. So we're going to be focusing on configuring our wireless LANs. We have three main types of scenarios that we're going to be doing this with remote site configuration, basic wireless LAN on a wireless LAN controller, and then we're going to do a WPA2 Enterprise wireless LAN on a wireless LAN controller. Those are our main types, and we actually have, do have several labs walking us through these as well. We're also going to end with troubleshooting common wireless configuration issues. So let's go and jump right on in. Remote site wireless configuration. So first of all, uh, the video, it's played through Netacad, so we won't have it, but it's going to be showing us how to set up a wireless router through the web portal. We actually have a lab walking us through the exact same thing, so we're good there. If we're looking at a traditional uh, small office, medium office router or combo based unit, it's going to be a router, it's going to be a switch, it's going to be an access point all rolled into one, and a lot of the feature sets are going to be de uh, dependent on the model. Here we have a Cisco Meraki uh, router. And again, part of that's licensing, part of its features. It all depends on what we're paying for that unit. Uh, typical home routers are going to look very similar. It's going to be an access point. It's going to be a switch. It's going to be a router all rolled into one. Those units are all-in-one based units. So what you do is you essentially log into the router itself. Normally the default username and password are admin but it's just dependent on your device. A basic setup would be log into the router, change the default admin password, look at the IP information that it's going to be handing out to the LAN, maybe change it if necessary, renew your IP address, log back into the router if necessary. You want to look at the wireless functionality as well, looking at the wireless LAN, uh, identifying what wireless standard you're going to be using. Is it A? Is it B? Is it G? Is it N? Is it AC? Uh, then you're going to configure the name, SSID. You're going to make sure that you have the appropriate channel set, 1, 6, or 11, but that's all depending on your environment. Next, you're going to set the security. Are you going to leave it open? Are you going to set it to WPA? Are you going to set it to WEP? Whatever your security requirements are, you make sure to do that. Next, you're going to be configuring the passphrase. That way you can ensure that there is a password on your wireless network. We may have an environment that we have multiple access points. So that's where we want to make sure we're checking channel coverage. That way, we don't have multiple devices on the same wireless channel. Uh, normally, if we're looking at extenders, that's going to be anything outside 45 meters. Uh, if we're talking outdoors, it's going to be anything over 90 meters. We want to add extenders. For our NAT, normally this is done automatically, but our NAT is what's going to take our private IPs and NAT them to a global or a uh, public IP. This is done automatic on the router. This is a Linksys style router that's pretty common where it's all automatic. If you have a business class router you may have to set up NAT. There's also IPv6 availability if necessary. More and more uh, routers also have a QoS based setup. That way you can prioritize traffic based off of uh, policies. If it's video, if it's web traffic, if it's torrents, you can now set QoS priorities based off of what type of traffic they are. In a small office, you may also have to do port forwarding. If you have like a gaming device, you may actually have to log into the router to set up the appropriate port forwarding. And again, we have a lab covering this aspect of it as well. 
So our, one of our first packet tracers is configuring a wireless network, connecting, configuring it, and then configuring it appropriately based off the requirements. We also have uh, another one setting up uh, a device as well, and it being functional remotely. Our next section is about configuring a basic wireless LAN on a wireless LAN controller. So we're going to be walking through the topology, accessing the GUI, configuring, and securing new wireless LANs. So here is our topology. We have a, a radius server or a management server. We have an access point. We have a wireless LAN controller. And we have some address information. On one of the PCs, navigate to the address of our wireless controller. So we have to configure the wireless controller. It's not much different from configuring a wireless router. It's just you have to work through it. And we definitely have a lab walking us through step by step how to do this. You, uh, once you're in the controller, you want to click on the access points. And that way you can see access point information. This is a very common uh, page for loading our wireless LAN controllers. This is what the wireless LAN controller would look like. So we can click on things like monitor or advanced or the summary pages so we can configure some of this. And again, we have a lab walking us through step by step what to do and how to do it. This is what the physical device looks like. It is a layer two uh, switch port. It also has a virtual interface that are created in the software as well, similar to VLANs. The ports on the wireless controller are essentially trunk ports that can carry traffic between multiple VLANs. Looking at the labeling of the device, we have a management port and we have switch ports, so do pay attention. So, how do we do our basic configuration? Basic wireless configuration is seven main steps. First, create the wireless LAN. Next, enable the wireless LAN. Select the appropriate interface, secure it, verify operational uh, integrity, monitor, and then view wireless cl uh, client. So, how we do that? We create a wireless LAN by clicking on the wireless LAN tab, and we have the ability to create our LAN there. We would give it our SSID, and we would give it an ID if necessary. Once created, we would be looking at our wireless LAN settings. We have the ability to enable or disable once it's been created. From there, we can now select interfaces. That's going to be the appropriate interface uh, or interfaces for our group. Once we are uh, done with the general, we can click on the security tab. That allows us to set our security. In our basic function, we'll be doing a pre-shared key or PSK you'd be setting the PSK as well. Next, you'd be underneath our wireless LANs. We would be verifying the access points are there and operational. We would go back to the main monitor tab and we can see our SSID and we can see the number of clients that are connected. Lastly, from our monitoring, we would be able to see connected clients. That will give us detailed information like the MAC address and IP address as well as other information. We have a lab walking you through all of those steps as well. Our next section is pretty much the same thing except we are going to be configuring the enterprise level security, not just the basic level security. So we're going to do that by going through looking at how to configure the controller and how to get it to work with radius. So again, PCA is going to be running our RADIUS and our SNMP. From there, it's also going to be acting as our AAA server. We're going to have temporary user credentials. It's going to be acting as our RADIUS server, so our users will be located on PCA. In real world, that might be like Active Directory or some type of other directory service. We're going to use PCB as our management computer. That's the PC we're connecting and configuring everything through. So how do we do SNMP? Well, you log in to the wireless LAN controller, go to management, go to set up SNMP, and you're going to set a trap receiver.
and you're going to be setting up the IP address. So from there, we need to set up our RADIUS server. So to set up a RADIUS underneath security, you're going to go to RADIUS, you're going to go to authentication, and then you're going to set up new. You're going to be setting and adding PCA to be that device. And you're going to do that through its IP address. You're also going to be setting up the password and the port number. The port number here is really important. Also, you're going to have to make sure to turn it on. Make sure that it has network users and network management both checked. And again, we have a lab walking us through all of the same steps just in case. Once you're done, we will actually apply it and ensure that it is functional. So again, how we do that is we try making sure we try to connect. Between the wireless LAN controller and the switch, that will be set to a trunk. Between the access points and the switch, that will be set to a trunk. We have to make sure that the addresses are configured and turned on. So how do we configure a new interface on our wireless LAN controller? Really easy. We create the new interface, we configure the VLANs, we configure the ports and interface addresses, set up DHCP, apply it, and verify. So what we're going to be doing is we go to controller, we go to new, we can set up our VLAN name and ID. Here we're setting up VLAN 5. They configure the port and interface address. On the interface, we will go to the controller, we will go to the interfaces, and we will edit it. Here, the wireless LAN controller is on gig 1 interface, port 1 on the wireless controller. That means the VLAN 5 interface address needs to be applied to that interface. We will go ahead and set the VLAN identifier and then set the appropriate IP information. We need to configure a DHCP server as well. So you have to give the address to where DHCP is going to be set up. You can have a primary and a backup, or you can set just a primary. It's kind of up to you. Verify the interface information, and then go ahead and click OK. Here we have a video walking you through this, the scope, but again, we're doing this as a lab step by step, so you don't need the video. So to create the DHCP scope, we will be going and creating the scope, naming it, verifying, configuring, and then verifying again. So to do that, we would go to controller, internal DHCP server, set DHCP scope. We would then go ahead and name the scope. Once we have the scope, we'd be clicking on the name. From there, we could then enter all of the appropriate scope information its pool address, its lease time, its default router, its uh, domain name, DNS, and important, make sure the status is set to enable. Lastly, we need to verify the address pool and lease time are appropriately configured. We will be moving on to creating our wireless LAN. So for our wireless LAN, we will be setting up a new wireless LAN, setting up a new SSID, enabling the wireless LAN for that VLAN, verifying 802.1x defaults, configuring uh, wireless LAN security to use the RADIUS server, and then verifying functionality. So we do that by go to our wireless LAN tab, go to, uh, you would be going to the go section to create a new wireless LAN. You'd be naming the appropriate SSID, and there will be an ID. The ID here is our VLAN ID. From there, you'd be setting up the appropriate uh, general information, setting up channels, setting up name, uh, ensuring that things like broadcast is set up. Once that is done, you'd be going to the security tab. For the security tab, you'd be setting up the appropriate uh, WPA encryption. And since we're setting up enterprise, you would be wanting to turn on 802.1x. That allows us to use our radius based server. Our next step would be our triple A server. That's going to be our IP address to wherever our radius server is located. From there, we will go back to our wireless LAN main group 
and we can see the information. That way we can verify the availability. And here is the Packet Tracer Lab where we have all of that functionality being configured and set up. Lastly, we need to talk about troubleshooting. So the troubleshooting approach when we're doing this is it doesn't matter if the problem is simple or complex. Everything can result from a combination of hardware, software, connectivity issues, or people. The you, the technician, must be able to analyze and look to determine root causes of the errors before they can resolve the actual issue. This process is called troubleshooting. Normally, the troubleshooting process is any sort of network problem should be a, a systematic approach. You don't just try things randomly, you try to break it down into simple uh, steps, simple uh, groups. That way you can test to see what is wrong and what is not wrong. Cisco has a six step process. Identify the problem, establish a pro theory, test the theory. If it's not, re-establish uh, a theory and go back. Once we have tested a theory and we understand, we need to establish a plan of action, resolve the issue, and then implement the solution. The step five will be a verify so a uh, full functionality has been returned. Last is document the findings, actions, outcomes, everything in between. We want to make sure that everything is good. So for example, if the wireless client is not uh, connecting, maybe we uh, see if the IP config, are we getting an address, are we not getting an address? Can we ping anything? Can we manually, a static, uh, manually set a static address? Does that work? Are we within range of the wireless connect, uh, the wireless access point? Is our connectivity really poor? Can we move uh, our area? Can we get closer to the access point? Are we getting any channel uh, issues? Are we getting appropriate channel speed? Next, we can ensure that the other devices are actually in place. Consider the possibility of maybe physical security issue. Are the devices powered on? Maybe we also inspect the links and the cables between uh, all of the uh, items. Maybe a cable was damaged, maybe a cable was removed. We don't know. So to optimize and increase our bandwidth of um, slower speeds, what we could be doing is looking at dual band routers. Maybe upgrade our wireless clients from the lower BG to N or AC. The goal here is to have the newer frequencies. Uh, anything around 802.11N or better is appropriate. If you're using slower devices, it's going to make the wireless even slower. Also, we may split the traffic approach. Maybe we have both 2.4 and 5 separated. That way, if you're doing streaming, you connect to one. And if you're doing um, regular data browsing, you connect to the other. By default, dual brand uh, routers and APs use the same network name for both. You might actually segment the traffic and separate the names. You may also want to make sure that the hardware is up to date. So things like updating the firmware and whatnot. We have a lab troubleshooting all of our wireless issues. And that is all we had for this chapter. We have another lab. We have lots of labs in this chapter covering wireless LAN configuration. So what did we learn? We, we learned about basic configuration. We learned about configuring a wireless router. We uh, looked at configuring a wireless LAN controller. We looked at how to enable our basic security and enterprise class security. And that is all we had for this area. Questions, concerns, please definitely reach out. Thank you.